Hello everybody, welcome to Engineering is Everywhere. My name is Tyler Lay, I'm an Associate Professor of Civil Engineering at Oklahoma State University. We're going to try to learn two things today. We're going to try to talk about structural engineers um, in more depth, and I'm a structural engineer. And uh, we're also going to talk about how do we use math in engineering. You know, math is something we study in school, we do a, a whole lot of it, and it's really, really important. But what do we use it for? How can we use it? How can we use it to make buildings taller? How can we use them to make them stronger? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, let's start out with um, structural engineering. Structural engineers, we, we design buildings, um, bridges, we, we, anything that, that's going to really be above the ground and hold things, hold load, um, especially people. Uh, um, as a structural engineer, we have to work with all kinds of different materials, with steel, with concrete, with wood, with uh, masonry. Masonry are, are bricks, okay? Um, and hopefully you, you've, you've seen some of those around your school. I'm going to first um, start out talking about um, how to build things, how to build towers, how to make things tall. I start out with two sticks, okay? Both sticks are the same height, but if I stack them up, I can get one stick to stand on its own, and the other stick no matter how hard I try, it keeps falling over. What's going on? What's happening? Well, if we look really close at these sticks, we'll find that one side is, is flat, and the other one has a bit of a slope to it. Slope. What does that mean? Slope's like how hilly something is. If you've ever been on a big mountain, you'd say that has a large slope. If you've been on a flat plane or on your floor, hopefully, it has a very, very small slope. And when, when we talk about slope, the equation for it is slope is equal to the rise over the run. It's a fraction. How high something goes up to how far something travels. So think about walking up a mountain. As you walk up and up and up and up and up a mountain, you're going up a lot for the amount that you're going over. Think about walking across your floor. As you walk across your floor, it's usually pretty flat. If it's flat, you're not really going up and down much at all, but again, you're going over. So I've shown some pictures here of different triangles with different slopes. And again, the rise is how much you go up, and the run is how much you go over. And rise, that goes in the top. What's that called again? The numerator, that goes on the top of the fraction. That's where the rise goes. Denominator, that's the bottom of the fraction. That's where the run goes. So as you can see here, I'm showing some triangles with different angles or different slopes. We have a large slope, a slope of 2 to 1. A middle slope is what I called it, a slope of 1 to 1. And a low slope, one of 0.5 to 1. And you could simplify these fractions to 2, 1, and 0.5, and you would actually use units like feet or inches or meters to talk about, again, how high something is to how far it moves. Instead of talking about slopes, you, you could also talk about angles. You could also re refer to these as angles. Slopes and angles are the same thing, okay? Slope is just a way to put it in math and a way to put it in, in, in fractions that are a little easier to deal with and a little easier to measure uh, in, in your, if you're actually building something. Rise, again, I've, I've got triangles here showing rise over run, and each one of them are the same triangles I showed before, and each one of them has different angles, okay? And that's important. That's what happened. That's why one of my columns was, was able to, to stand and one wasn't. It's because of that slope at the bottom. It's because of how flat it was. And if we can quantify that, if we can understand that, that's really powerful. Another way to think about it, if I have two blocks and I want to build on top of them or I want to, I want to see how, how high th that they can go, if I put a block on this one, it slides. Why? Well, it's got a slope to it. There's a certain rise for a certain run. This one has a much different slope. If I put the block on top, then it'll stand. No problems. Now, before we started talking today, hopefully you got to try to build some towers. I, I want to know how, how high were, were you able to get? How tall? 
This tower is actually made of 25 blocks, 25 individual blocks. Did anyone get to 25? That's a tough number. It's a really tough number because as you start to build, you start to place these blocks. If there's any slope or imperfection in the bottom blocks or angle, those become magnified as you get taller and taller and taller. And so even the smallest slope will cause problems as you get higher and higher and higher up. Notice that it's also important on where you stack the blocks. It's also important on how you stack the blocks to try to keep them in, in line. But we can see there start to building or tilting more and more. Oh, it's close now. And it falls over. Why did that happen? Well, it's because of the slope. It's because these blocks aren't perfectly flat. It's because the table wasn't perfectly flat. And all of those individual imperfections, all of those individual changes in slope added up and made it not possible to be as tall as this one. Because this one has, the only, the only thing that's not perfect is maybe the bottom. The only thing that could have a slope is maybe the bottom. Look how high it is. Look how tall it is. So what do we do in this case? And why, why would we do something like this? Why don't we just build every single building with this? Well, if you're building in a big city, if you're building uh, um, in, in a lot of places actually, it's very tough to bring in members that are really, really, really long. And instead we have to hook them together. We have to make connections in between them. We have to stack them on top of one another. And once we do again, these local imperfections, these local slopes can start to cause issues. So what do we do? Because we'd much rather, it's much easier for ants, if ants were going to carry these blocks in, okay? These slopes are not necessarily large for us, but for ants, they're massive. They're huge. If ants were going to bring all these in, you would need a whole army of ants to bring in this. But an individual or a couple individual ants, maybe two individual ants could bring these, these, these blocks in. And we do the same thing when we build. We want to make our members in ma small, manageable sizes. So we don't have to have too specialized equipment. It makes it e much easier to build. So how can we make a tower as tall as this one, but use individual blocks? Well, we can make them flatter, right? If we made every single block flat, perfectly flat, then we wouldn't have any issues. But that'd be tough. That's really tough. It's really, really tough to make them flat. So instead, what we commonly do is we put glue, or I have putty in this case. We, 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 we put putty in between. At least that, that's what I'm going to do for your example. And if I have putty in between, you can see I have putty on this block. And this block I put on top, it's the same block I had before. It holds. No problems. I can keep putting putty keep stacking these blocks higher and higher and higher and they don't have to be flat. They don't have to be flat. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, we don't use putty when, when we build buildings and we don't use little wood blocks either. We often use bricks and in between these bricks we use mortar. What's mortar? Well, mortar is kind of like concrete. It's a mixture of water, sand, and cement and it goes in between the bricks. It goes in between them. I've got a picture of it right here. So you can really clearly see where these big bricks go in place and they have mortar in between them to hold them together. And the mortar is like glue. The mortar is kind of like concrete. It gets hard, it has strength, and it holds these bricks together. So now, I challenge you, you built with these blocks before. I want you to use the putty now in between each one of them. And I want to see how high you can go. I really want to know how high can you make these towers? Can you make them taller than 25 blocks? Thank you so much. Take care.